think of it like everybody are. <laughs> so, complete. Yeah, I need to agree on it. Yeah, really crazy. Yeah. Since that's such a fantastic term, I remember. Unfortunately, uh, after spending some time reading the photos, uh, I didn't find any photo with me and all reasons from the time. I found this. This is me looking naive, you know. <laughs> so is this 2004? Where, where was your paper uh, on any? Let's see. It's coming up. Oh, okay. Please, please wait for me. Okay. <laughs> so you, uh, so I did find Alisa was also a fair entity, and again he took care of me <laughs> as a younger brother almost, and uh, and also Lisa was also there at the time. And this is this photo I think was taken during the uh, KITP autumn beach. I don't think have changed that at all. <laughs> yeah, far naive, you know. <laughs> Little did I know that at, at exactly this time, Takamura uh, and Jusen were working on a project which led to uh, this famous paper, which appeared just a few months after. So I, because I was attending a workshop of mathematical structures in string theory, and I was basically interested in this aspect of string theory ever since. So even when this influential Kennedy paper came out, I just didn't notice the photos. So <laughs> that was unfortunate for me. But uh, yeah, so already some time to have fun in California this way. So I, I'm really thankful. Uh, so moving forward, in May 2011, there was a conference three strings generations at EHAS, and uh, you see a number of uh, familiar figures in the photo. Uh, so, and Ogurisan is there, you see, and uh, Kumaran's face is there too. But that was the 50th-ish anniversary meeting for 10 string terrorists. This is there, and uh, some of their mentors and also students are also invited. So I was invited. Uh, I gave a talk there, 10 years or more precisely 11 years have already passed. And we are now celebrating over its 60th anniversary. So time flies. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, concerning these zero more than 10 years <laughs> of anniversaries, there is the following famous saying of Confucius, Koshi, uh, and uh, for those who don't understand Chinese or uh, Japanese translation. In a tentative English translation based on the Japanese translation by Shigeki Kaizuka, who is a famous Chinese classicist and, in fact, the brother of Hideki Yukawa. Hideki Yukawa is from a scholarly family. He has four, he, he, he's one of the four brothers. All of them are the famous scholar in Japan. The last names are not the same. The last names are not the same. So, it is a thing of all Ogakawas. But in Japan, there's a system of uh, adopting a good son to a different family. So Hideki Yukawa was originally Hideki Ogawa, but adopted by Yukawa, and the Shigeki Kaizuka was adopted by Kaizuka. So this talk is becoming something else. <laughs> 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 so, 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 so he says, when I was 15, I set my mind on learning. The second line says, when I was 30, I stood on my own. Then, when I was 40, I stopped vacillating. And then, when I was 50, I understood what heaven wants from me. When I was 60, my ears became obedient. That's the literal translation. And many people debate exactly what it meant. The common interpretation of uh, take chosen by Kaiser was that he learned to calmly accept the inconvenient truth spoken to him. And then when I was 70, even when I acted as I wished, I did not transgress any norm. Mm -hmm. so that was a comment uh, made by Confucius in his uh, very late years. So when I was 50, I understood what heaven wants from me. So on the conference, three string generation of IATS was over. I realized I should have used the quote and asked Hiroshi 
and another 50 years <laughs> if they understood what heaven wanted from them. It's not okay them ever since. Therefore, I will not miss today's chance to ask you see, if he has attained the level of Confucius at 60. This means that, I mean, when I was 60, my ears became obedient. I became able to accept inconvenient truth told. So let us see how it goes. No, no that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> This book was, was a topic of the uh, talks already many times, and this sold uh, 10,000 to 100,000 copies. How many copies did it sell? Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, Kobita san, who was the uh, uh, editor of uh -huh. this, uh, said that uh, it sold, uh, uh, I, I, I think, uh, 150,000. 150,000? Yes. So I think the number of digits is, uh, I guess, correct. Right? Yeah, I think it's a good thing. 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 I think it's a good Right? This book is not supposed to be for Italians. <laughs> I will tell you that again. The book is very common in Japan. And this is the of Kishimeni. So this is the same, same, the same book. How about close three? Close thing, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have this uh, yeah, macaroni. Can you talk for me? Ah, can you talk for me? Yeah. <laughs> One comment. Okay. So, Arona is in Kenji, yeah. 78, where he likened the first super spring revolution with the American Wild West, in particular the land run in Oklahoma, where the settlers could occupy the land as much as they wanted. Well, which I don't think was a touch to his in the yeah. Uh, no. yeah, thank you for yeah. <laughs> So, I was going to go there. But, uh, yeah, so I thought. Yeah, I, 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 I heard the message. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's why I chose this topic for this occasion. <laughs> so, Thank you. So now everybody sees that he has attained a level of confidence at six weeks. So now, the clause, please. <laughs> All right. So happy to extend my lesson, all this and many happy returns. Now, let me come to the physics part of my talk. For the scientific part, let me talk about something I've been thinking for a couple of years, mainly with Kazuya uh, Uegura, with occasional help from Yasun Oribi, former student of mine, and Kantaro Omori and Julia Xaxena. And recently, we've been greatly helped by Mariko Yamashita, a brilliant mathematician on the math side. So the topic is uh, on a certain non supersynthetic heterotomic six brain. So that's my topic. It's a very technical subject as being said, but it comes out to be uh, rather curious of this too. So consistent quantum gravity should or would have dynamical objects with all possible charges. So that's a long-standing conjecture. The refinements of this statement, such as the cobordism conjecture of Martin Amara and Barfa in 1919. Sorry, 19. And the algorithm has played a crucial role in the development of this uh, subject in general. Uh, today, we're not going to discuss any general feature of this conjecture, but rather, I'd like to consider a case of a particular Z2 charge. So, it's a very technical subject. So, I consider the periodic SO32 theory, uh, which is SDO to type 1 theory. It has Dynamical particles in the adjoint and in the spinner representation of SO32 algebra, but it doesn't have any in the vector or in the conjugate spinner representation of the heterotic string. Sorry, or in the SO32. This means that the gauge group can be taken to be a uh, spin 32 over Z2 portion, uh, which is not SO32. So spin 32, of course. As a Z2 quotient, which gives you SO32, but there is a different quotient, which gives you a different 
uh, gauge group. And you can consider a background of spin 32 over Z2, which does not allow objects in the vector representation of SO32. So that's the type of object I'd like to consider today. So we can call these backgrounds uh, backgrounds with a vector structure in a paper from uh, 1997. And abstractly, it is measured by an obstruction class, B2, uh, which is in the uh, Z2 valued homology class of the space time, such that uh, if you integrate this class R, this which is B2 over the R2 shape C, it gives you zero or one mode two, depending on whether the given spin 32 over Z2 configuration restricted on that particular cycle C chosen lists to spin 32 or not. So when the integral is zero, it's just a standard spin 32 gauge configuration. But if it integrates to something non trivial, then that configuration is the uh, release of spin 32 over Z2, and you cannot release it to spin 32. It's kind of like a Z2 charge. It's a weird Z2 charge. Uh, and uh, if you believe the general argument about the nature of quantum gravity, um, there should be a dynamic object which has this charge. Is there one? one. Well, just from the deems of reasons, it should be a sixth grain of the form. Uh, you have, uh, of course, you need some non trivial two sets, right? Around which, and if you integrate V2, you get one mod two. That's part of the definition of a V2 charge. And you can consider a spherically symmetric one. So you need a radial direction, and 10 minus 3 is 7. So you consider a seven dimensional world volume. So it's a six frame. So in uh, this, some of the basic properties you can infer. From that, so it's not super symmetric, first of all. The reason is the following a brain breaks transformation and therefore breaks some of the supersymmetry, but the minimal SUSY in seven dimensions has the same number of supercharges as the Pendy bulk theory itself. Therefore, you cannot just break it uh, uh, to get some part of supersymmetry, so it's not just supersymmetry. And it is a Z2 torsion brain meaning that if you have two six brains, if you bring them together, they just uh, decay to nothing. It's because, well, this concept of the charge is more than two. So uh, if you, here, I mean, if you are old enough string theorist, and uh, if you are told that in SO32 theory, there should be Z2 torsion brains, that's very familiar, right? So it is known that there are Z2 torsion on BPSB brains in type 1 SO32 superscreen. I should have listed the paper by Asho here too. I'm sorry for not listing it, but we, so people notice that there are such things. And it is natural to ask whether the sixth brain I'm talking about is one of those non BPSB brains. The answer is no. The reason is as follows. Well, type 1 Z2 torsion brains are, well, I mean, extensively studied, so you just open up a reference, it says that there are just D8, D7, D0, D-1, there's no D6. But, but that's not a good reason. More fundamentally, um, all type 1 D brains come from tachyon uh, condensation and, and analogous procedure from all 32 gauge fields on the nine brains. So any such D brains, torsion D brains, basically corresponds to uh, all 32 gauge fields. But our brain is characterized exactly by the condition that it does not allow vector representation of SO32. So our brain is characterized exactly by the conditions that it's not an all 32 gauge field. Therefore, there's no chance to uh, write it as a type 1 D, torsion D brain. So the next question is, does it really exist? And if it does, what properties does it have? So that's a, another question. But to try to answer that, 
you first have a concrete idea of exactly how this weird looking uh, vector representation not allowing configuration looks like, right? So a simple SO32 configuration of S2 without the vector structure is obtained as follows. So consider U16 subgroup of SO32. There is such thing, right? And you put a charge one half monopole in the U1 part of U16. If you do that, clearly, because the charge for the first chain class is non integral I mean, that bundle doesn't actually exist. It's not a U16 bundle. So it kills 16 of U16. It also kills 32 of SO33. So it is without the vector structure. And if you work out carefully, a joint and spinners of SO32 have become uh, even order anti symmetric tensor powers of 16. Therefore, for them, the monopole flux are all integers. Therefore, it's a lag, and so they are fine. So, so, so it's just a simple uh, embedding of U1 into SO32 uh, bar. So essentially, it's just a U1 configuration. It is just that it does not uh, get listed to spin 32, and it's a genuine configuration of spin 32 over Z2, which is not SO32. So let's analyze this system. I mean, you can put such a flux at the level of supergravity, and let's take the S wave approximation to analyze this. So, you, which means that you just take the KK expansion around this S2 and take the S wave only. Uh, you find that there is, exists an eight dimensional chiral sphere in the second index disymmetric uh, tensor of SU16 on this eight dimensional space consisting of the seven dimensional world volume times the radial direction. So, how can a chiral spinner, I mean, so this is eight dimensional, has a boundary, and you have a chiral spinner, right? How can a chiral spinner be put on a half space? That seems no boundary condition you can write. At least I don't know that. And it is similar to the Chandler Robotov problem in higher dimensions. So, let me get into a bit more detail. The anomaly polynomial I10 of an 8D curl spinner in uh, this second order symmetric anti symmetric tensor of 16 of SO16 has this factorized form. The questions are not very important, but uh, you see the standard the factorization form where you have a degree four part containing the uh, gravity contribution and also the gauge field contribution, and there's this six form part. So it has a standard form which allows you to use gray shorts mechanism involving the D field to cancel the anomaly. So the total anomaly of the system vanishes. And th therefore, there is no fundamental obstruction to write a boundary condition to the combined system. But it is the general belief in our field that as far as the anomaly vanishes, uh, the system, uh, there should be a boundary. It's, it's, it, should be, it should be possible to write that boundary. So it's okay. It should be okay. But uh, no weakly coupled uh, boundary condition is known in this case. I mean, in this situation, it's not even that. The anomaly of a chiral spinner is cancelled against an anomaly of another fermion. So it, it, it is not just a boundary condition which converts a fermion into an fermion in a different representation. It is a boundary condition which needs to turn a given chiral fermion, hitting a boundary, into a B field excitation. I have zero idea what it is. I don't know how to write it. So very naively uh, thinking, I would say that this six frame of the boundary in the infinite limit uh, need to be a strongly coupled Lunson super symmetric theory 
which have the ability how to convert the chiral spin uh, coming into it into a B field. So until recently, I wrote here conformal in Bayern's theory, but the Yuna Bayana <laughs> reminded me that uh, always the distinction between conformal scale and variance. So I, I uh, yeah, uh, scaled, scaled my statement back uh, from conformal and back into scale and variance. But I super symmetric, strongly coupled theory in seven dimensions sounds crazy. I don't know any other strongly coupled theory in higher dimensions. And then there are some five dimensions constructed by performing a supersymmetric theory. But as I said, there's, yeah, anyway. So it, it, it seems to be a interesting a boundary condition. And also uh, there have been a few papers recently trying to solve this uh, kalan rubakov problem from the conceptual point of view. So how, what exactly happened if you send in a kalan sphere uh, into the core of monopole and what comes back. That's a con conceptually confusing question. And this is a similar, similar problem in higher dimensions and slightly more confusing because um, it involves fermions and beef. It's not linear. It's not linear, yeah. It's two fermions with both, but in the demand condition here. No. <laughs> no, I mean, it has, you can't convert the fermions with both. Huh? The one condition should be cross one. Uh, if you say x equals to y, x and y have the same odd, odd parity, right? The condition. Some strong way for all this thing. And from the bond perspective, it looks like a boundary condition, however you do it. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, so, it's a different object. So, yeah. So, so let, let us try. Uh, let us try thinking about it further. So does such a six frame really exist? Because assuming its existence, we get to various strange features, just like, like those I said. But of course, you can write down a supergravity solution. So uh, some months ago, Kazuya and I got convinced that we should try to write down the supergravity solutions because we were too young to know the papers. So this, I decided to go for literature search. And of course, there is this famous paper of Korobis and Strominger and Garfield goes from Strominger and Gibbons and Maeda, who worked out exactly the solution of this type required for us. And this is an exact solution to 10 dimensional heterotic supergravity. It doesn't look too bad. I mean, it, it, it fits in the blue page. So this is just a U1 uh, subgroup of the full gauge group. And I put some charge Q uh, multiplying the volume of R. And this is the dilaton. Dilaton has this form. And this is the metric R minus and R plus are uh, the positions of. Uh, outer and inner polarity. And uh, you first, if you start from outside, you first hit the outer boundary. And there, this R is normalized so that it becomes the radius of the physical radius of the S2 in the radial di angular direction. And the uh, dilaton grows stronger as you approach the center, because this becomes a zero only at the inner horizon. So it's a nice smooth solution. And outside of the outer horizon, nothing special happens. It's a smooth, uh, perfectly nice super random solution. Is, there, is F the U1 and U16? What is it? F is just the U1 subgroup in U16, yeah. And the Q is proportional to the product of R plus and R minus. And M is proportional to R plus plus R minus. And from the standard inequality, this means that M is bounded below by Q. So, so if you choose supergravity with 
At least we can write down the black grain, which has this uh, required Z2 charge. I mean, having this black grain already it gives us this kind of problem because, I mean, the point is that you're scrolling the spiral spinner and the black hole needs to evaporate back deep here. So I just don't know what happened, what's going on. But, uh, but in order to speed um, the system better, let, let it evaporate, right? It's a finer temperature solution. So the large cube, is that what you're doing? I just take it's a Q2 to be one. Oh, one. Yeah. The basic unit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just take the smallest possible Q. I mean, thank you for the question. I forgot to say that. So, even for the smallest possible Q, as long as R plus is very, very large, it's a smooth, nice photographic solution, right? So, it's it's a very weakly charged black hole solution. We can make it different, right? What happens? So, at least formally, at the level of the supergravity, we can reach the extra extremal limit where R plus equals R minus, which I wrote as R zero. So that's a extremal zero temperature solution with an infinitely long throat region. So the flux is still in the same U1 part of U16 within SO32. The data um, grows indefinitely, and the metric becomes perfectly flat for this eight dimensional path. And uh, S2 is as constant radius. And uh, this constant radius is Q times the spin scale. So, these are in the papers from 1991, so nothing new. The only new part is this particular choice of U1 within U16 within SO32. So the point is that this S2 part has a stringy size. So you don't trust, you cannot trust super gravity here. So if you get into further details, let me make some comments. So the function of this brain can be computed from super gravity. It's G to power minus two in the hydrotic frame, as in the hydrotic S5 frame. It's not too strange. If you translate it back to type one uh, frame, it is G to power minus three halves. So in between an S5 brain and D brain, D brain has G to G inverse, and the uh, NSI brain has G squared inverse. So it's in between. So it's a very weird object. And the uh, hydrotic coupling diverges at the core, as I said, which means that the type one coupling goes to zero at the core. This should be weakly coupled in the type one frame, which totally confuses me. Also, throat length is infinite in the hydrotic frame, but finite in length in the type one frame, also in the Einstein frame. So, and then but the origin is singular of non orbital the type. So, it's a very weird solution in the type one frame. I don't know if I trust the super gravity solution of my power frame. So at the zero temperature, you have a naked singularity in this solution? Uh, it's in, in, in I do I see the geometry again. In the yes. Okay. In, in the frame, it's just a standard infinite throws. Why it goes from plus infinity to yeah, infinity? It's a standard. So nothing is strange from the hydrogen point of view. It becomes strange only in type one frame where things should be simpler because the string coupling goes to the second one, the origin. So it's weird. And so and finally, not this S2 is of string designs and still solution of reliable with Q equals one. So at least let's resolve this last issue, right? Like in the hypnotic wall sheet theory can be analyzed exactly. So this was found by Kavya. So the sheet has the structure. So you have bosons parameterized in S2, and because it's a hypnotic string, there are right moving fermions, super, which are super partners of S2, and you have current algebra fermions, and they are given monopole flux one over two. It just happens that the theory of 32 measurement of viral fermions 
can be written as a combination of SU16 over Z4, level one, current algebra, plus another uh, Dirac fermion uh, up to some finite gauge, which you can control or be holding. Uh, so the original theory is in fact just SU16 over Z4 level plus uh, the act fermion is moving and the act fermion right moving. But if you carefully look out the monopole flux as a field, I with capital psi L, it's just exactly the same as my group. So this combination of the fermions, psi, and S2 is in fact n equals 2 comma 2 S2 single model. So the, the combined system is in fact very simple. It's just that a current algebra plus uh, N2 gamma 2 S2 sigma model. And this second term is known to gap in the infrared, giving you some uh, finite number of vacua, which just goes away under uh, the orbital, which I didn't carefully write. So, leaving just SU16 over Z4, the purely homomorphic spin CFD of CL equal, which equals 15. So, the external limit of our black six frame has an exact hydrotic wall sheet CFD description, which is uh, a flat R6, one, a flat uh, a linear, super linear dilaton, and a super current, so just a body I guess you 16 over the current algebra, which is very similar to that of the previous five, right? We will convince you that this brain really exists. I, I don't know. And in fact, this happened to be exactly the same solution as a stable background to the 10 dimensional tectonic hydrotic SU16 theory found recently by Justin Kyle, who's sitting somewhere in the audience. Yeah. So I don't know why. So the, the original system I started from a super symmetric hydrotic chain, but in the end, as far as the worksheet is concerned, I just get the same theory as you start from a tectonic hydrotic chain. And uh, Simeon and Watson uh, had. I've written a series of papers connecting uh, non supersymmetric and symmetric uh, string theory in, in, in a basically similar manner using Indian data. So there seems to be a relation. But uh, this, from, from our perspective, this arises as a description of an extremal limit of this strange D brain. So that's basically the string theory part of the talk. But I thought that there would be some time still, right? I have 10 minutes more, right? Let me try to go into a bit more mathematical detail. Is there anything one can say from type one perspective? Uh, uh, I don't have any, except that it's very weird. It looks even weirder in the type one frame. And so, as I said, the coupling. In, so usual usual excuse in analyzing NS5 brain wall sheet theory, et cetera, is that the coupling diverges at the core, right? So something miracle should miracles should happen. That was our excuse in the past. Here yeah, I can use the same excuse in the hydrogen frame, but in the type one frame, that coupling goes to zero, and uh, you have a finite distance singularity of no more before the type which is supported by uh, competition between the metric and the gauge field. And gauge field comes from open string and metric comes from the closed strings. So there's no hope of writing down a uh, world sheet description in the standard sense. Why, why, is, why, is, why can't you write the world sheet and repeat it in last sentence? Because for, in the world sheet perspective, closed string term is dominant against the world. Uh, Open string contribution just because of our assumption that G is, okay. you know. Yeah, so, so in the thick one frame, supergravity solution can be formally written, but, the, but that's a solution where you are balancing uh, terms of different perturbative orders, string theory, perturbation theory. So, so, so if that's the case, isn't the term that you're balancing is very big? Yeah. Which one is, what is F is big in that sense? Which is a core because you have a constant kinematic flux. So, so, yeah. so, 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 so,
I guess in high one. The fact that you have such a simple uh, uh, wall sheet description in the hydrogen slide is more surprising to me. <laughs> so this is an exact conformal theory. Oh, no. So so why do you say it exists or not? At three level it exists. You mean there's no perturbity what happens? <laughs> Also, there are wonderful issues with cosmological Yeah, it's not so significant for so. So there are tons of problems. So three level, yes, it, it is fine. So, but 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 uh, yeah. So that's the current status as far as the string theory solution or six six plane solution is concerned. Will it be a state particle like state? If you wrap it on a torus. Oh. Hmm. I haven't thought about the compactification. Yeah, that's that's a good question. I don't have any answer. What did you say about the suggestion? That if the tangential directions are wrapped on a six dimensional torus, will it describe a particle? Because new particles are always easier to identify. I don't know if there is a stable. Oh, why is it? Second image for the good suggestion. Yeah, we should compactify and take the TV all over there. Yeah, or, yeah, I should try some. Thank you. So let me let me go to a bit of mathematical detail. So we started by saying that we consider the integral of this two uh obstruction class in the two cycle, measuring the absence of the vector structure for SO30 on the two cycle, right? But this statement is only applicable for geometric heterogeneous conductivation. But we saw that this wild sheet sigma model representing SO32 on S2 without vector structure is connected by middle organization group flow to just SU16 over Z for level one current algebra. Therefore, an abstract internal CFD, SU16 over Z for level one, should equally have this Z2 charge. So you can pose the following question. What is this Z2 charge in the world CFD language? You don't have the space time, so you cannot integrate V2. So what is this charge? So we want the Z2 value invariant for one sheet SGFTs with this fixed central charge difference suitable for compactification to HD. So you need an invariant for SGFTs, and the this known invariant of 2D SGFTs is, of course, the elliptic genus for the super conformal index, taking values in modular forms with integer Q expansion projects. Unfortunately, it is only non zero for when, when this high low temperature difference is zero or four or eight. This is because of the simple fact that KO series Z only for I being equal to zero or four or eight. Other, so the standard written index of elliptic zero just vanishes in this case. But corresponding to the KO group being Z2 for I being one or two or eight. You can consider more to two elliptic genera of such as QFTs when the central charge difference is one comma two or more to eight. Mm. And minus that, it happens to be two or eight. So this might be it, or so we thought with Kazuya. And so there should be more elliptic, more, more two, modular two elliptic genera. Surprisingly, there's no paper on the head side. Nobody has studied that. And even on the last side, there are just two papers from 91. So Kazuya and I developed. Took, took some time to develop the theory of module two electric genera from hefty case point of view, which will not be useful for this case. So it, it is not useful, unfortunately, in this case. Our efforts are wasted. So we needed to try harder. What is this Z2 charge then? Well, the something called the short Steiner conjecture says that the continuous deformation class of zero common supersymmetric theory is a uh, fixed. Uh, central charge difference makes uh, something called TMFN, which is a group of weekly N topological modular forms, which is a topic of homotopy theory. In our case is minus N is minus 30, and mathematicians have, have found the following structure Z2 plus Z2J. Uh, and this Z2J map can be checked that it has non zero modular two elliptic genus. And there is this additional Z2 factor which doesn't have zero module two, uh, which, doesn't, which doesn't have any module two electric genus. So, with very special uh, 
won't you see a PSU 16 level one appear in this very specific military construction? And you have this very specific C2 appearing in R. And there should be a connection, right? That's the kind of stringy math we believe in. Uh, Kazia doesn't seem to believe in that, so she didn't believe me for a while. But, <laughs> but I asked uh, Mayuko if this is actually the case. Uh, she did a heroic computation on some that that theory actually gives this Z2 class. So we now have a physical representative of this Z2 class. So that's an answer. So let me read to it. Perhaps just a good construction as you keep this cycle. When stated abstractly in terms of hegemonic world six theory, is a subtle PMS charge. Mm. But there's more. So, AT space time is still geometrically. We consider 10D hegemonic in AT plus 2D decomposition, where 2D side is abstract CFP, and AT is geometric. So, is there an AT interpretation to this charge? That's the next question. Well, so let me come to a more familiar case, the more to elliptic genus of the internal theory. And it just counts the number of modulo two, the number of modulo two of the R sector ground state. And R sector ground state of the world sheet just counts the number of modulo two of world, sorry, space time ground state experiment. Therefore, the modulo two elliptic genus of the world sheet theory basically gives just the number of modulo two of massless space time experiment, okay? So there should be some other natural Z2 value importance in HD. What is that? So to motivate, let's remind ourselves the feed angle, the continuous one and the discrete one. So in 2D, let's say, it's just a different, totally different system to uh, remind you about the feed angle. So in 2D, you engage there, you can consider the this comes in theta times trace of f over 2 pi, which is the continuous theta angle, where theta is equivalent to theta plus 2 pi, right? In the case of this S of n, you have a subtle line invariant, in the only class, and because this is a Z2 valued object, theta can be either 0 or 5. So when the topological class of gauge field is Z value, and theta angle is continuous, but when the topological class of the configuration is Z2 value, then the theta angle is discrete. In AP, with Grand B field, with this standard head, uh, green shorts condition that DH proportional to trace R squared, available topological classes were studied by John Balbo in 1971, which is the straight, uh, string cobordism group at A dimension A, which must have this structure Z2 plus Z. And this Z part is, is, is just corresponds to the integral power of trace R4. Over the eight dimensional space time. So the continuous theta angle is possible, right? And this continuous theta angle is actually present in heteristic space because in TP, we have the standard coupling B wave space R to the full one coming from the great worlds. And you compact it on the number of 2D space. So let's call theta as the integral of B field over, over 2D space. So it gives integral of theta times trace r to the fourth in HD, where I remind you that theta is dynamic, right? So it should be, which as it should be in a quantum gravity theory, and every parameter should be dynamic. So how about this C2 part? Well, this is known to be generated by the exotic A sphere, which is happen to be born down to the group micro SU3 in a unique H flux. It generates a Z2 uh, topological class. So, formally, you can consider a discrete theta angle for it in heteristic strings. And is there actually a discrete theta angle for it in heteristic strings? And the answer is yes, exactly when the 2D internal space is built up in the structure. So, I'm wrapping up. More abstractly, heteristic internal world series theory, giving the element in the C2 part in TMF minus 30. Leads to this non trivial discrete Z2 theta and A, detecting the exotic A sphere. So let me summarize. So DMF minus 30 classifies the possible world C theory to be used in A dimensional compactification and it has Z2 plus Z uh, same, while the A dimensional part has this Z2 and Z part. And you Z2 correspond to each other. So you have a 
many different infrastructure that you don't have this this with the three triangle in AD, but if you do, if you will be with the structure, you have not not really all uh, this with the three triangle in AD. So, so, sorry, I got close. So, so this heterotic eternal worship theory is not the heterotic worship theory you, you are discussing. Uh, this, this is the heterotic theory I'm discussing. So, so, so in the previous section. Yeah, if you take a particular one, SU16 over Z4, then one. That gives me a non trivial element in this D2, and that, give, that gives me a non trivial theta angle in HD. Okay. If you use the random other watches, CST, like the standard compactification T2 without any cage field, that gives you a trivial class here. Yeah? Okay. Trivial class here. Yeah? That means that the discrete theta angle is zero. But, but in the previous section, you gave uh, uh, explicit construction. So, why do you need to? Uh, present the proof of its existence here. Um, so maybe I'm confused. That's so confused. you see, you see, for the discrete theta angle in eighty dimension, yes. But uh, in string semi construction, every coupling should be derivable from the long sheet theory. So given the world sheet theory, such as T2 without any gauge field, or this SU16 of Z4, there should be a way to derive this value of the discrete heat angle. There should be a way to distinguish yes, yes, yes. You know, whether it should be zero or pi. Yes. So that's, oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah, that's what I, I was saying. So when, there's, when there is no vector structure, the discrete heat angle is there. When the, sorry, the discrete heat angle is pi. And when the, there is a vector, Vector structure, then the discrete theta and then it's set. Okay, that, that, that's what I should say. Um, there should be a physics derivation of this one. Unfortunately, at present, we only have a good abstract method using the Anderson self reality of TMF, again, thankfully provided by Mayuko. So I want to find a physics derivation, but so far I'm failing it. So let me summarize. So the physics part we describe some properties of heterotic six plane. Carrying the without vector structure Z2 charge. It's not super symmetric, but has a very simple Wolsey description. And it gives a mysterious strongly coupled bounded condition for an AT chiral fermion whose anomaly is cancelled via Green Schwartz mechanism. And it strongly suggests that provides us a strongly coupled non super symmetric theory in 70, so which is very weird. On the math side, this is very, without vector structure Z2 charge. When stated abstract in terms of energetic worship, there is the Z2 part of this TMF group. And in the AT space time language, it is a Z2 theta angle for the Z2 part of the string volume that we measure in the exotic A sphere. So thank you very much. And let me end with a picture of the organizer, which is Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess in your time for and there must be or am I allowed to take questions or yeah, please. Okay, then uh yeah. it's a beautiful talk. It's quite a, a remarkable story. So this the it's a good use of TMF classes in a particular string theory context as well. Yeah. We could try to connect this, but uh one question I have is that uh, uh ancestor perhaps of this kind of thing is 10D type to be. Right. Which should also have, presumably, with this conversion conjecture, a yeah. boundary state, which is again has the same uh, exotic feature that has a chiral uh, right. genome being converted to the self to apply form right. and field right. in some form because anomalies cancel between them. Um, question is this okay, are there a connection between these two objects? In other words, uh, I'm assuming you haven't studied the 10D or you don't have a worship construction, but assume that exists. Would their sequence of things lead to this by dualities? Ah, that's a good question. That's a good question. We don't immediately know. Uh, yeah, even in the topic string, you can study some other objects with different discrete chunks. Similarly, non super symmetric with a similar worksheet solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can do that. 
at least in, if they're in, in different dimensions. I, I haven't thought about type two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's a very, and uh, we should be able to explore the duality around this yes, episode. Exactly. I suspect that I suspect once you figure out one of them, and then you should be able to connect them all because they, they all smell the same. Yeah, similar, similar to our right. 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 Yeah. In fact, there are, I mean, from if you, these, uh, these years of, you know, I like TMF, and uh, there's a big table of TMF uh, group. And uh, there seems to be a few additional Z2s which seem to correspond to some other discrete charge mm -hmm. in heterotic stream theory. So, in the same dimension? No, not in the no, because in this dimension, there's only this Z2, but in other dimension, you have something similar. And, uh, yeah. So, there might be a duality among them. Yeah, we have a study. And in the case of type 2. So. Thank you for the question. So, is this explain somehow a magnetic dual to the non BPS particle? No, no, no. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. Good point. Z2 time, we are, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if we go to the universal cover of the gauge group, then uh, it's like um, you are quotienting by one Z2, and I think one is electric, the other one is magnetic. I, yeah, that's a, um... Question, but uh, my if I remember correctly, when the charge is discrete, the electromagnetic dual is not the usual d zero by d zero versus d zero plane versus six plane, but the zero plane versus seven plane. If I remember correctly, if that's the case, then the dual object to the magnetic and um, Z2 non BPS zero grain would be the standard type one uh, Z2 torsion grain D7. That's what, what I said. I need to think about it carefully. Thank you for the comment. Yeah, there are tons of issues to be explored. Thank you. Maybe related to that comment, what carries the 16th charge, the fundamental charge? Could that be the is zero in the background? In other words, what is how do you um the fact the fact that you have now fundamental class, isn't there something which is charged on that? Could it be in this background? No. Yeah. Because um the current algebra is in fact S U sixteen over Z4, so the fundamental is gone. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, please. Just following up on basically all of those questions about duality. Can you speak up? Sorry. Following up questions about duality. Do you understand there's also a mod Z2 zero ring charge in heterotic, in E8 heterotic stand theory, coming from the Kaluza Klein graviton in the Rajava Witten picture? Okay, yes. Do you know how that dualizes to this? I don't know. Um... I, I don't know is my question. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, luckily or unfortunately, I don't yet have a uniform, universal, uniform way to study these exotic charges. So I need to study them one by one. So that's why I spent an entire talk into studying just one particular plane, one particular dimension. We wouldn't do that in the case of deep brains anymore, right? But uh, yeah, this is my current status. Thank you. My question is about the TMF. So uh, the, the first, you have to start from the information of the CFT construction, SU16 of a Z4. Right. And eventually, you proceed with the, the hard calculation to say that the that theory corresponds to the non-trivial element in the Z2. Right. So to be the first step in that process, that part could be understandable for string theory syncitation. Beyond that, presumably, that's way beyond the comprehension of mine. Um, so my short answer is that I need to write it up in a way understandable to string things. And uh, the long answer <laughs> is that, uh, so 
Let me go back to the Stoll Spiegel conjecture. Um, so this connects EMF with uh, the space of supersymmetric quantum field theories, but unfortunately, or well, fortunately for us, the right hand side is not well defined, right? So it is very difficult to connect what type of computations we can do to the kind of computations we can do. Um, so is the computation my did is directly for SU16 over Z4. What I do is to start from SU16 over Z4 and do a lot of continuous deformation to a particular system for which mathematicians can use their formalism. So it's a very roundabout way of getting this Z2. Yeah. So it, so it needs to use lots of T-duality. And uh, I, I studied from SO32 times of energy, right? But I need to go to EA times EA. And you, you, you use the fact that EA level one current algebra has been located in the TMF group. So that's a starting point. And from that, you can try to copy the manipulation in the string theory side into the combination in TMF. And uh, that's already very hard to do. But luckily, there's a book with tons of information about TMF published last year, which is about 700 pages, just about TMF. <laughs> and uh, using that, she did a heroic computation, and it actually is a non-trivial energy. Right, thank you. Thank you.